a Neolithic society full of buildings that are very square and people on roofs. All right, maybe they weren't always on roofs and perhaps the buildings weren't always square, but uh, certainly they are in this image here, which is Katul Hayek, which is a old Neolithic town. Uh, it's, as you can see, you start having a lot of people in a small space. And this really is what defines and makes the Neolithic era unique, uh, is this settlement of uh, larger towns and soon-to-be cities uh, with a large amount of people. And that really changes how society and how people interact and how people live. So, <clears throat> what are those changes to society? Good question, you! sitting there asking that question. Well, good thing I have answers for you. What a day to be alive. So the changes to society that we start seeing during the Neolithic Revolution, uh, one of them, yes, we have people, but interesting enough, hunger. Hunger? You're sitting there asking yourself, once again, good job. Hunger, you ask, but they have farms. They have all these nice domesticated animals that are fat and you can eat them and you don't have to wander around in the forest looking for berries. Well, interestingly enough, the diet of Neolithic people doesn't get better with settling. One of the problems is that since there is a kind of set amount of food, uh, the diet isn't very varied, whereas hunter-gatherers are eating a ton of different things, and they have all sorts of different nutrition that they can get from their environments, whereas when you're sitting in a larger town or a city and you're depending on grain or cattle, sometimes you're eating the same thing over and over. So interestingly enough, uh, Neolithic humans get shorter. Their diet isn't as good, so they don't have enough to grow. Um, so from the height, average height goes down from five foot ten to five foot one, which is a pretty big drop. It's a nine inch drop. And not until recently do humans start growing taller. And other changes we have growth. But Mr. Shea, they're not healthy. How are there more people? Well, uh, in fact, just because they're not as healthy doesn't mean they can't support as many people. Since farms can produce a great deal of food, you can start supporting a larger population. And with a larger group of people, you start to have very, a variety of jobs. So there are many, many different jobs, and people are specializing, and you can really support people in many different ways. So Neolithic Revolution starts having rather quite large uh, settlements into the thousands of people. Disease. Of course, when we're sitting around with many, many people, sickness starts to spread easier. And not just between people, but often a lot of diseases are spreading from animals to humans. And those include stuff like the flu, smallpox, uh, measles, and you have people living in very close proximity to these domesticated animals, and the diseases can pass quickly. I mean, even today we have things like hoof and mouth disease. And when you have thousands of people living in a fairly small location, then that disease can spread quickly, especially without ideas of sanitation that we have now. So large diseases, and there's certain areas where massive quantities, massive percentages of populations are being wiped out by disease. But as people start growing closer to animals, then they start growing immunities to those diseases. So humans know how to survive as we are still alive today. So we have figured out how to really resist a lot of those diseases. 
And the last big thing that happens during the Neolithic Revolution is something called social stratification. And social stratification is the result of division of labor. If you look at this image here, we have people performing a number of different jobs. And in your societies, when you created them, you had a lot of different jobs that you created. You had things like the hunters and gatherers. You had basket weavers. You had people that were going to be doing pottery. Uh, you had your medicine people. And certainly in the Paleolithic era, people were doing this simply to survive. But as you start having large populations of people, then these divisions of labor start to really show in how people are seen. So it goes from people being fairly equal, people are doing a fair share of work, to something like this, where you start having a, uh, in this case, a pyramid of power. So social stratification is this idea that different people have different amounts of power, different amounts of respect, and different amounts of importance. So if you are simple picking crops, which in the hunter-gatherer days, everyone needed to pick crops. It was an important job. However, as we get more advanced and we have different jobs, then someone that's picking crops isn't as important as someone that's in charge of trade. And they're not as important as someone that is in charge of the religion uh, in places where religion starts to gain great importance. So it really starts to have uh, effects on society, how people are seeing each other, and how really you view yourself in the larger context of the world. Which is why today people say these hunter-gatherers are very primitive, but they in many ways had a great deal of equality. Whereas that is not something that continues in the Neolithic era, and certainly has not continued through the rest of the planet.